Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 28 of the Stringing It Together podcast, my podcast about mostly knitting, also sewing, and whatever else I'm getting up to here in Frankfurt, Germany, where I live with my two fluffy cats. One of whom is right down here. Thank you, Tom. So, welcome back if you are a returning viewer, and if you're a new viewer, viewer hello. Mm -hmm. No answer. Okay, this done. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're here spending some time with me. Um, I am back in my sort of nicer location with my nicer setup today. Um, yeah, thank you for bearing with me the last couple of weeks. I did want to get episodes out, but things have been crazy in the last few weeks. We're certainly no exception, but um, yeah, I'm happy <laughs> to be back in this setup for the moment. So, yes. Um, you will probably notice, those of you who have watched before, that I am wearing a finished object, well actually two kind of recent finished objects. Um, I will talk a little bit more about those later, so I'm dressed a little bit fancy I guess for the podcast today, but I thought, hey, I, I should wear it, I should show you guys what's happening. Um, okay, so we do have a Ravelry group, I want to mention that, oh man, and I am Soprano Knits on Instagram and Ravelry. Um, so, those are the best places to follow me on social media. Also, we have a Ravelry group, the Stringing It Together podcast group. Um, all of this information is in the down bar as always. And uh, the link to the Ravelry group also has the show notes, which are up for most episodes. Every once in a while, I slack off and miss one. But I do see that people go and read them sometimes, so I try to keep up with that. So yes, I'm looking at my show notes over here. Um, because I do have some today, which is good. Last time was a little bit of a mess without them. Uh, so yeah, one little announcement is that the Penolith collection is now released. So this was my pattern collection that I did with the Fiber Company, which consists of a cowl, which I can pop on, and a hat. So these are color work and air weight yarn. So these were knit in the beautiful um, Aaron Moore yarn from the Fiber Company, which is one of my favorite yarns ever. And yeah, they're the perfect thing for quick gift knits and, um, or quick knits for yourself, of course. Um, and also people who are new to color work. Doing it in a chunkier yarn and on a larger scale is a really good way to just kind of get your bearings and practice. So those are available on Ravelry now. They're available separately. Uh, the Pinot Lith hat and the Pinot Lith cowl for five euros each, or if you buy them together, when they're in your cart at the same time, automatically you will get a discount, and they are seven fifty together, so you get one of them half off, and that will always be. So, yay! Those are done. Those are out, and uh, yeah. So that's that announcement. Good. So moving right along. Um, I have one finished object, and it is a big one. I finished my design that I was working on, which is the Salonza shawl. Do, 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 do. I'll kind of stand up because it's giant. Kind of back up here. So yes, this is a giant shawl knit out of Owo Local, and so it's 50% organic wool. Not sure if it's merino, so I'm not going to say that. And 50% alpaca. It has so much drape. It is so woolly. It is so delicious. It's falling off. Okay. I am so happy with how this turned out. And oh, it's huge. It takes four skeins of Oval Local is um, an American yarn, and it is listed as a worsted weight. Um, you could also use just kind of like a heavier DK, or, I mean, it's a shawl, so right, you could mess around with that, but I really, really recommend this yarn because it is so luscious and beautiful and amazing. So, yeah, so I finished it. Um, so it has all these bobbles. It has kind of this chevron pearl bump detail, and then a... Um, garter section at the bottom and then a fun Icelandic bind off. So it is currently in test knitting which is very exciting. Um, set to be released towards the end of November so I will keep you posted on that. I also recorded in my typical style um, a couple of video tutorials to go along with the techniques and the pattern which in this case were the bobbles and the Icelandic bind off which are both things that are simple but um, 
kind of confusing when you see them written down. <laughs> so I wanted to just show you. I think it's so much easier. So I, oh, I love it. So there are some nicer pictures up on my Instagram. Um, thank you guys for the love on this pattern and the nice um, comments so far. I love it, love it, love it. And um, if it looks familiar to you, if you have the Woods Making Stories book, which by the way is also out and available for pre-order, uh, I designed a hat for that book. And it is the Salazza hat, and it has some similar design elements. And that is because um, I originally submitted a shawl. They asked me to adapt it to a hat. I said, absolutely. Um, would it still be okay if I released the shawl after the book is out? And they said yes. So I wanted this. <laughs> I wanted this giant, giant shawl. And yeah, so this is the right side and this is the wrong side. And just because the wrong side, quote unquote, is against, you know, pearl bumps, the, the bobbles stick out a little bit more. So I do like that it's totally reversible. It's just giant and cozy and you can really just wrap it around yourself and keep yourself warm and oh it's like one of my favorite things I've ever knit I think so I'm really happy about this one so keep your eyes peeled for that in about a month but I'm very 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 happy to have it done there was some frogging happening in the middle there um, yeah mainly just because it wasn't that my math was wrong, I was just counting wrong, and there's been so much going on in life and stress, and sometimes I was just not with it. So it got a little frustrating at the end, I'm not gonna lie, but it is done now, and I am thrilled about that. So that is my only finished object, but that's a big one. I mean, I probably knit, I think last time I talked to you guys, which was about two weeks ago, I was on the second skein and it used about three and a half, so I did a fair amount of knitting on that. So, very exciting. Happy that's done. Okay, so now we will work, we will move on to works in progress. Okay. Yeah, and I have a new cast on, which is very exciting. So, living in my Fawn in the Fat, Fox, Fawn in the Fax, that would be very office-y, um, my Pond in the Fox Unicorn Project bag, which I adore, is this. So, <laughs> it's a giant tube. <laughs> um, this is the neck for my piece of silver sweater, which is a cropped, fitted, eh, not really fitted, I guess, but um, turtleneck by Vera Velimaki that appeared in the first Len magazine. So yeah, you have to do this giant two by two rib tube. And I have completed that. Um, I saw in a lot of people's project pages on Ravelry that this took them forever because they were just not happy. I mean, this is knitting like two socks almost, <laughs> just ribbing. Um, but for me, I think I actually cast this on on the plane um, going to the US to go to the wedding. So it was super helpful for me on that trip when I was so tired. Um, and just so much traveling, car knitting, plane knitting, all that kind of stuff to just have something totally mindless. So I got a lot of work done on this really quickly. Um, cause yeah, you had to do 10 inches of ribbing, which is a lot. Uh, and then I've switched to the larger needles and you do some short row shaping, which I have messed up twice and I've had to frog it twice. So last night before I went to bed, I ripped out the second messed up time just because my brain doesn't work and put it back on the needles just so I can start fresh. I think I'm gonna do a different kind of short row um, because the ones that are written in the pattern, I've never done them the way that they want me to do them and they're, they don't describe how you want them, you to do them. I had to reach out to a friend who would knit this and been like, what the heck, I don't understand. But I am knitting this in um, La Vienna May, Merino Singles. Uh, Something graffiti, graffiti, pop graffiti, pe peony, peony graffiti? I'll put it on the screen, I don't remember. Um, but it's really pretty, so let me give you a close up. Oh man, there was kind of like more, a little bit more blue in here than I was expecting. But I like it, I like the effect. 
and I, I have the magazine, so please do not think that I'm like plagiarizing, but I don't want to carry it around. So I just photocopied the first, or it's actually only two pages, so that's kind of the, the drawing of what it looks like. So, because I, yeah, I don't want to carry around the magazine, so don't worry, I have it. <laughs> um, because it's only available in Lend right now. Um, which is a little bit strange because most of the other designs from that issue are now available for individual purchase. So I don't know why this one isn't, but there you go. So hopefully I'll get more progress on that. I just really want that sweater. I just really want all of the sweaters right now. So yeah. So that's good. And I'm actually, I'm knitting it. It's, I didn't quite get gauge, but I'm okay with it because I would sort of prefer it to be slightly more fitted than it is in the pattern. Um, so yeah, that was a conscious decision not to be spot on, but that was pretty close. The other thing is a pair of socks, which I think I showed last time. I just started them. These, again, it's been like the week of frogging, or the two weeks of frogging. Um, I have, I was trying to do a design with these. This yarn is just too, there's a lot going on. So I ripped it out, and I'm not just doing a vanilla sock, I'm adding some elements. It could turn into something that I could release as a free pattern, I don't know. But um, let me kind of show you. This is just how it looks. This yarn is really beautiful. It is, um, what you call it? Craftfulness on her tweed base, which she actually doesn't carry anymore. But this is the wool coat colorway, which is beautiful, and I think she still has the colorway, so yeah, but it's just really pretty, and I wanted socks in it, and again, I need something that's kind of mindless, um, because I am also working on another design right now. Um, I don't know that I'm allowed to talk about it yet, because it's for a publication, so I'm not going to show you anything for it, I'm not going to talk about it, but um, probably by next time I might be able to say something, we'll see. Um, but I've been working on that as well. So again, I just find for me, I know that a lot of designers only work on their designs. Uh, I need to have other stuff going on that is, it doesn't have to be completely mindless, but um, you know, just something to give my brain a rest because when you're working on a sample or when you're working on a design, you have to be focused and make sure it's perfect and you know, when I'm on a train and I'm tired or I'm watching TV before I go to bed, it's like I just want something with no kind of stress attached, basically. So that is it for works in progress. Um, let's talk about, what am I talk about? I'm going to talk about acquisitions because I have knitting acquisitions before I get into sewing. So yesterday I went to a local yarn shop here in Frankfurt, we don't have that many options. Um, we, yeah, we have some smaller shops and that seems to be more normal in Europe as a whole. There are definitely exceptions to that where you have bigger stores. But for example, when I go into a local yard shop, stop, local yard shop in the US, uh, usually, you know, I can just walk around and sort of shop on my own. A lot of shops here, that is kind of out of the question. Like, your doors, your hand is still on the door handle and they're like, what do you want? How can I help you? Um, a lot of times they have things in the back or put away, there are no prices on anything, so you can't really shop by yourself, which to me is a little bit of like an introvert's nightmare. Um, I don't like asking people for help. I don't want to talk to anyone else in the store unless like I really need help. Um, but you know, in a yarn store, like I know what I'm doing. But then I have to do it all in German. But anyway, <laughs> so I went to, I'm getting better about talking about knitting in German. I cannot really like knit in German because all of the terminology is different. But um, I can hold my own like kind of in a conversation having to throw in some English here and there. Um, because I did this, I went to one of our local yarn shops here that carries a lot of fiber company yarn, and um, I was there for like over an hour talking with her, and she was showing me all of these samples and all these beautiful yarns that she has, and it was actually a lot of fun. But I went to a different one that is pretty new. I think it's only been open since 
maybe it opened at the beginning of the summer or something, but I hadn't been there yet. And um, <laughs> if you don't know, the word for knitting in German is stricken, and the name of this yarn store is Stricktees, which is amazing. I mean, who doesn't love a good yarn store pun? But it was a really nice shop. She was really helpful. And I had to shop for a swap that I'm doing and then accidentally ended up buying some stuff for myself because she was showing me lots of different options and what are you gonna do? So one thing that I got was a little notions bag. And this is from the stitching project, um, which I think I have heard of. Um, it's handmade in India. It's like supporting, you know, women who are making these things and giving them fair payment and all this kind of stuff. I just thought it was so lovely, and I really love this. It has like some little loops on it, so, um, you know, bags that have like carabiners on them or something, you could even hook it on somewhere. It has a nice zipper pull, and I already have something in it, but it is lined in sort of like this clear vinyl type stuff, which is actually perfect for a knitting pouch, right? Because sometimes you have really pokey things in there and you don't really have to worry about it poking out or stitch markers falling through if it gets like a hole in it or something like that. So I thought that that was actually really perfect and it smells good. I can always use a new, I don't have very many little pouches like this and I could make one myself, but I just fell in love with it. I thought it was so beautiful. So I bought that for myself. And then I bought this yarn and she had something knit up in it and it was pretty awesome but it is very outside of my comfort zone very outside of what i would normally purchase and i'm thinking i might challenge myself to design something in this crazy stuff but this is definitely going to be a challenge but i'm kind of excited about it so this is what i got it is alpaca Boucle yarn. I have never knit with anything like this. It's like weird, fluffy stuff. Maybe I should unscan one and show you. But here they are. They are fluffy as heck. And this is Kremke, I guess, Soul Wool. Um, it is a German company. I looked them up. I'd never heard of them before. There are no projects for this yarn on Ravelry, exactly zero. Um, so yeah, it is 89% alpaca and 11% um, polyamide, which is basically nylon. And the reason for that is that basically the string that this is on is like the nylon holds it together. If you can kind of see that. So this stuff is crazy. Right? <laughs> I am not sure what I'm going to do with this, but it feels like a cloud and it looks like a yarn, like a yarn beard. Like, I just want this on my face like Santa Claus. It's so good. It's just so good. So it is 50 grams and 250 meters. So yeah, I mean, I guess it's like a lace weight, which I also like don't, I don't know. It's gonna be really interesting, but if I had to say that I have sort of a signature in my design style, it's definitely adding texture to things. So it will be an interesting choice because this would not show up like a stitch pattern really, but it is texture in itself. So. I'll keep you posted on this, but I'm actually like, I'm terrified and like really excited and up for the challenge. And the worst thing that could happen is I just end up making something super simple that isn't really even like a design and I just wear it because I think it's awesome. But <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's going to be a fine line between making something chic and making something that looks like cheap with this kind of stuff, right? Because a lot of these things are novelty yarns, which there's nothing wrong with knitting with these kind of yarns. It's just not something that I have done a lot of, but yeah. So that is my like weird random purchase that I impulse bought for myself, but they're so soft. Oh, yes. 
Okay, so anyway, <laughs> that is that. Let's move on to sewing. So I, oh, by the way, I should have mentioned that I'm wearing this. This is my um, speckled fade dotted rays by Stephen West that I finished, I don't know, a month ago or something? Maybe not either. Um, but I am wearing this with this today, A, because it's like false, it's kind of cold, and B, because I wore it like this to the wedding. So if you're new, I, uh, about two weekends ago, yeah, two weeks ago, I was in the U.S. extraordinarily briefly for uh, my boyfriend's older brother's wedding in Vermont. It was beautiful. It was amazing. It was an insane trip that we... We left on Thursday night from London, and we returned very early on Monday morning. <laughs> so it was a it was a big trip, especially because we flew into Boston and then had to drive up to Vermont, which is about a four hour drive. So that was intense. Um, and there was all this other stuff, like we borrowed his best friend's parents' car, so and we stayed with his best friend. Um, because we got in really late on Thursday night, and um, there was like just so much schlepping everywhere, and we had like no time to do anything. Like there were a few American things that I had wished I had picked up. I didn't step inside a grocery store. I went to a gas station at one point and bought like ranch dressing and two bags of flaming hot Cheetos because I wanted them. <laughs> but that was all the shopping I had time to do, except for one other thing, which I'll talk about. But so I just thought it looked good with this dress, but let's talk about the dress, right? That's like the whole point. So this is the Betty dress by Sew Over It. And I did it, but it was not easy, you guys. So I, there are a couple different versions of this dress. The original, sorry, I feel weird, like <laughs> showing you my boots. The, the original version um, goes straight across here. And I think all of the versions have like the v-neck in the back. Um, if you're new, again, I am a very new sewer, so this was incredibly ambitious, probably too ambitious, to try to do this dress, <laughs> but it worked. Um, yeah, so, okay, issues that I had. The bodice was pretty straightforward. There were a lot of um, darts and things like that happening. And I did have some difficulty with the fabric. It is a viscose fabric that is very drapey and was very, um, what do I want to say, like unravely kind of at the edges. So it was difficult to work with. And I made a couple of mistakes. And when I had to pick out stitches, it was like horrifying. And sometimes it would pull a little bit. So probably not a very good choice for someone who's so new to sewing because like I had to rip out some stuff. But anyway, the bodice, yeah, it was pretty straightforward, although I'm not super happy with the fit here. Like, it's not laying perfectly flat. Um, I did a little bit to be able to help that. Like, I bought some, um, it was like interfacing tape, sort of, and I like, because, well, you can't really see it, but there's like a, a facing that's inside. And I thought that maybe that was kind of the problem, so I got some of that to kind of tape it down. It worked out okay. And then um, it has this giant circle skirt. So I attached the skirt, and then it told me to hang it overnight. So I did that. Didn't tell me why. <laughs> and I'm a beginning sewer, so like, I don't know. <laughs> so it told me to hang it overnight. I did that, and then I just decided to hem it. Oh, and before that, I guess I put the zipper in, and that was a whole ordeal, mainly because I have realized sew over it patterns are way too big for me. Um, the sizing is just off, in my personal opinion. I had to take this baby in so much. I might be able to show you on the bottom back hem, because I actually never cut this off, which I should do. Look at how much I had to take it in. That's a lot. And I, no, I guess I didn't cut any of it off yet, but yeah. So that was part of it. My zipper kept like breaking apart, like the pull kept coming off. I don't know how I did. I think when I put the pull back on, I put it on backwards. So then I sewed it like backwards to itself. So 
And I was rushing to the finish to get this done before the wedding, so this was all like incredibly stressful crafting going on. And then, so anyway, so I got the zipper in though, finally closed up the back. My first time doing a zipper on anything, and so this was like high stakes. And then I hung it up overnight. I didn't know why I was doing that, but I did it. And then I just like meticulously ironed it and pinned it and hemmed it, right? Not a small skirt, big circle skirt. And then I put it on, and there was this big section on my left side that was hanging down that didn't line up. So then I Googled around and I found out that I was supposed to hang it up overnight because sometimes the fabric like shifts or it falls differently so that you don't have a straight hem and you're supposed to check for that. But it didn't tell me that, so I didn't. So I'd already hemmed it, and I had the section that was like hanging down. Part of me was like, is anyone really going to notice that? But I'm a perfectionist, and I, yeah. The first thing I did was I measured from the, the waist line to the end of the skirt, kind of around the skirt. And I found the areas that were considerably longer, um, and then sort of my target area. So then I laid out the pattern piece on top of the circle skirt and sort of traced around it, um, where I wanted the hem to be so that it would sort of more or less be the same length from the waist. Um, it was not perfect, it was not very scientific, um, and then I sort of uh, re-ironed it to, and pinned it where I wanted and then had to rip out the stitches like around the edges and re-sew it and it was fiddly and it looks kind of janky on the inside but you cannot tell from the outside. And it's okay, it is not perfect. It is not a perfectly straight hem by any means, but it's not the kind of thing that anyone would notice at this point. And I just decided, okay, that's fine. But that was a nightmare. I was doing that, it wasn't the morning I left. No, it was the day before, but I had a lot to do before I left. So that was crazy, but here it is again. So I'm pretty happy with it. I got a lot of compliments on it. Um, Nathan had a lot of fun telling everyone that I made it because I don't know when people are like oh I like your dress I just I'm like thank you and he's like she made that so anyway but it was a hit it was a hit at the wedding so that was really fun Nathan and I sang at the wedding or well I sang at the wedding Nathan played for me and that was really nice um, it was beautiful I mean it was the ceremony was outside in this field that's in between the Green Mountains and the Adirondacks we went on a hike that morning. Oh, it was really magical. And the foliage wasn't like quite, quite there. I think those of you that went to Rhinebeck, which was the following weekend, saw like peak, peak foliage. But still, I mean, it was nice. And there's this section of the drive um, from Boston to like the Middlebury area, which is, you're just driving through like these little country roads through the mountains and it's magical. So that was really great. I'm blabbering on about that a lot. Um, so let's move on. I do have one sewing work in progress, which is another sew over it pattern. Um, this is the Molly dress. So this is the um, City Break capsule collection, which is a collection of PDF patterns. And this one can be made as a top or as a dress, but I decided to make a dress with this striped jersey that I have. And I really liked this because it has this like drop shoulder. I love drop shoulders. But it's just sort of like a, like a shift dress. Um, and I thought that in this fabric, it would be really versatile. This fabric is super weird though. Um, it's like really, it's really soft, but it curls like crazy. Like, let me show you if I can, yeah, I have not hemmed it. I don't know if you can see, it just doesn't lay flat. Even when I iron it, it's curling everywhere. Um, so I put on the neckband and I put it on and it looked like it was laying flat and now it is not. So I have to rip that out and do that again. And the other thing is, is it's just, again, it's too wide, it's too big. So I just have to know this now. I have a lot of sew over patterns <laughs> that I want to sew. Um, so those of you who are experienced, like what do you do when you find out that a pattern producer is just way too big for you or the sizing is off like how can you I guess I just have to adjust the pattern piece so that I save fabric because I'm just gonna I think what I'll do is I'll just leave the stitching in there that I already have and just 
stitch in farther and then eventually cut this off, right? Because there's no point in ripping out all that zigzag stitching that I did. But yeah, I also have to rip, rip out the neckband. I hate doing jersey neckbands. It's the worst to get them to fit. Like it looked like it was going to be fine and then when I have it on it's going like so this was another frustrating thing. I wanted to have it finished, but I just haven't wanted to work on it. Like, crafting mojo has not been good. I have been angry at my knitting projects. I've been angry at my sewing projects. Um, so that has been kind of challenging. Yeah. Um, but I think that's kind of it for what I've been working on. Um, also, I should mention, that I did get one new acquisition. Got a new laptop, um, which is horrifying because this is a huge purchase, obviously. Um, his name is Paul Hollywood, um, and he does have a Mary Berry. Um, <laughs> Candace, my friend Candace, hi Candace, of the Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. We both had the same MacBook Pro from late 2011, which um, People at our respective Mac stores both called like vintage because it still had a CD drive. They both needed to be replaced at the same time and we replaced them with the same computer on the same day because we were like talking about it. <laughs> so I did pick up a new computer when I was in the States because it is so much cheaper there, but not cheap. So that was a big acquisition, but I really needed it. Um, Anyway, yeah, editing this podcast now will be so much better because my old computer just could not handle iMovie and it took hours of just like watching like the, the pinwheel of death. Ah! So anyway, yes, yeah, so I talked about, I'm just kind of moving on to talking about things about life that may or may not be related to knitting now. Um, the wedding was great. Um, that weekend I decided to release the Penolith collection, which was insane to try to do a release. like while all that was going on. Um, I won't lie, the release did not go well. I had high hopes because um, it was my first collaboration with a major yarn company and they also did some promotion for it, but it was certainly like my least successful pattern release. By a lot. But it's okay, like not everything is going to be popular. I'm just trying to look at it like, all right, like my first bad release. It's fine, let's move on, let's just keep doing the work. It was a little upsetting, I won't lie, but like, let's move on. Um, started a new job, as most of you know. Um, there's been a lot of stress surrounding that, mainly that they have not paid me in the past two months because I didn't have it on my visa, because you can't get a visa appointment. Um, so I ended up going to the visa office the other day, like begging them to help me. I was like, I don't need an extension. I just need it like on, on there. But they didn't have like, there's a lot of bureaucratic stuff that needs to happen. It's not enough to have your contract. You have to have it approved by a different government agency and then take it to the outside of Bohoda, which is like the aliens office, which is a different government agency. And then they have to process your visa. So they couldn't do that because Mainz had it sent my contract to this other place that has to approve it. So now I have to do this whole thing again and go back and blah, blah. But finally, like I got some money from them, but it was also stressful. Everything felt like it was out of my control. So I, part of the reason that I feel like my crafting mojo has been bad is that I've been dealing with a lot of depression um, in the past couple of weeks. And that has been really hard, especially starting a new job in another city that I have to commute to. and. Um, being on designing deadlines and um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's been a challenging time for sure. Um, just I uh, I'm reevaluating a lot of things about my life and what I really want and do I really want everything that comes along with the career that I've worked so hard for. Um, I want to do the thing, I just, there's so much other stuff around it that I think is like having a really negative effect on my general happiness and well-being. And I think that I finally have started confronting that and that that's very challenging for me. Um, 
because that part of my life is a huge part of my identity. It's wrapped up in my identity. That's what artists do, right? Like, I'm an opera singer. That's what I do. And if I don't do that anymore, if I do that in a different capacity, it feels like failure. And um, that's a hard thing to confront. And I've had to confront that, you know, again, kind of with um, the pattern release, which is a completely different thing. But I felt like I was gaining momentum and then it just felt like I hit a brick wall. And that happens, I know that, because I've dealt with so much failure and so much rejection in music. So anyway, maybe that's an overshare. It's, but a lot of that has been going on in my life and just thinking about what do I want my life to be like? Like, Isn't being happy more important than being successful in the thing that I thought I always wanted to do? So there are a lot of thoughts happening um, around all of that. Um, but I am really happy that I, there are some like German holidays coming up next week. So I have a couple days off and I'm going back to London to see Nathan, which is really amazing that I was able to take time off and go so soon after starting this full-time job that um, has kind of a crazy schedule. So I'm super grateful for that. I'm super happy to go and see him. Um, going to the wedding was super fun. It was super exhausting because I met like all of his family and all of his friends and again, introvert, like it was go, 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 go all the time. We were always with other people. There were all these events surrounding the wedding, like um, <clears throat> there was a rehearsal and then there was, um, it wasn't a normal rehearsal dinner. Like everyone that was going to the wedding was invited to all of these events. So it was like a pizza and beer party, but it was being hosted at the lake house, which is where we were sleeping. So we were the first people there and we were the last people there and we were jet lagged and it was a lot. Then the next morning there was a breakfast also at the lake house. Then we went on a hike. Then we came back and there were people everywhere while we were getting ready. And it was just, oh, then there was a brunch the day after the wedding. So it was like so crazy and exhausting, but really great to be there. I'm so glad that I went and um, great to spend that time with Nathan and his family who are lovely. So I'm really excited to go back and spend some more time with him in London, I get to go see the the show that he assisted conducted. Um, it's an opera, so that's cool. It's an opera called The Consul, and it's a lot about like going to the consulate. And he was like, "You're gonna identify with this a lot as a immigrant," so so that will be fun. Um, now I just feel like I'm blabbering on, but that's really all I have to share with you today. Um, I'm happy to be back. Uh, yeah. It's an interesting time, lots of transition. I'm like trying to move and all this kind of stuff. So anyway, we'll see. But I'm sending all of you so much love and support and whatever for um, everything that you're going through and hoping that your crafting is bringing you joy. And uh, that's really it. So um, again, Soprano is on Instagram and Ravelry if you want to find me there. Please do come over and join the Ravelry group. We don't have any cows going right now, but um, it's just a nice group of people hanging out. And yeah, so uh, if you want to, subscribe to this channel to see my videos pop up in your subscription feed, like the video, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, thank you so much, and I will see you guys hopefully in about two weeks. So until then, take care and happy knitting. Bye!